Party in order to send such assistance to our brothers and sisters in Afghanistan as fast as possible. And we are sure that your various contribution would facilitate the implementation of such mechanism in consultation and in cooperation with the international concerned authorities and entities. And I believe that this meeting will result in commitments and pledges in order to provide assistance to the Afghan people. On the other hand, the African group in the OIC has always been supporting, providing continuous support to the Afghan people. And on the other hand, we are also supporting the rights of the Palestinians, and we shall continue to provide our support and assistance to all the efforts geared to maintain the inalienable rights of Palestine. May the Muslim Omar live, and may the solidarity among ourselves live and salam alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you, Excellency, for your statement. I will now request Dr. Muhammad Suleiman Al Jasir, Chairman of the Islamic Development Bank Group, to come to the rostrum and deliver his statement. In the name of Allah, the Lord of mercy, the giver of mercy and peace and blessings be upon his prophet, Prophet Muhammad, and his guests and kin. And the followers until the day of resurrection. Your Excellency Imran Khan, Prime Minister of the Islamic Republic of Pakistan, Your Highness Prince Faisal bin Farhan Al Saud, Foreign Minister of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, the OIC Summit Chair, Your Excellency Mr. Makhdoum Shah Mahmoud Qureshi, Foreign Minister of the Islamic Republic of Pakistan, Your Excellency Mr. Hussein Ibrahim Taha, Secretary General of the Organization of Islamic Cooperation, Excellencies, Representatives of the OIC Member States, and representatives of the other countries and organizations invited. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I greatly appreciate the opportunity to be present at this critical and historic meeting. We gather here today to reaffirm our commitment and solidarity to our brothers and sisters in Afghanistan. Given the gravity and complexity of the challenges in Afghanistan today, no single entity or institution can tackle them alone. The international community needs to collectively provide a holistic, practical, sustainable, and comprehensive solution, learning from the lessons of the past and leveraging the strengths of all stakeholders to address these daunting challenges. The immediate priority should be to urgently provide the core necessities, including food, shelter, clean water, child nutrition, health care services, education, and cash transfers, while taking appropriate mitigation measures to minimize potential leakages. Nevertheless, humanitarian response alone is not sufficient. There is a need for medium to long-term engagement to promote self-reliance and development beyond immediate humanitarian relief through reconstruction activities. Immediate humanitarian relief is essential to build foundation for stable economic recovery and development. Distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, around 76% of Afghanistan's population lives in rural areas and is involved in farming and agriculture. Consequently, the development of agriculture will be instrumental in addressing poverty reduction and promoting food security. In this regard, 
international and regional organizations may help promote food security by introducing climate resilient crops and enhancing agricultural productivity. It is also significant to economically empower communities, especially youth and women, and low-income families by strengthening their resilience to shocks, improving productivity and vital economic activities, and supporting microfinance and SMEs of Afghani entrepreneurs. Ladies and gentlemen, since 1975, the Islamic Development Bank has established itself as a trustworthy AAA rated multilateral development bank and South-South partner. For 46 years, it has built a proven track record of supporting its member countries' inclusive and sustainable socioeconomic development. Acting upon the decades-long trust vested by its member countries, the Islamic Development Bank would be honored to accept proposed new mandate to manage the Afghanistan Humanitarian Trust Fund. We will rely on our solid and extensive expertise and experience in efficiently managing various trust funds, such as the Islamic Solidarity Fund for Development, Al-Aqsa Fund, Al-Quds Fund, Lives and Livelihoods Fund, and the Awqaf Properties and Investment Fund, APIF. We also had experience in managing the ACHE program in Indonesia, Cyclone Effect Management in, in Bangladesh, Endowment Fund for Children Education with UNICEF and King Salman Humanitarian and Relief Center, and Smart Education Initiative with Global Partnership for Education and the Arab Coordinating Group, in addition to working in many fragile and post-conflict contexts. Our work is valued by our trust development partners such as the World Bank, Asian Development Bank, UN aid agencies, the Melinda and Bill Gates Foundation, the Saudi Fund for Development, Qatar Foundation, Abu Dhabi Fund for Development, and the UK's Foreign and Commonwealth Development Office, to name a few. The IDB, the, the Islamic Development Bank, may also provide the necessary platform for, neighb for neighboring and regional countries to play a positive role in capacity development and technical assistance for institutional building by leveraging our unique reverse linkage mechanism for South-South cooperation. That could include also what was suggested by Mr. Qureshi for a group of experts from OIC, United Nations, and IFIs to uh, address the issues of financial connectivity of Afghanistan. The Islamic Development Bank may also provide the necessary, the, leveraging its vast experience with the fragile states and exemplary credentials to manage such funds, the Islamic Development Bank is well positioned to act as the trustee and administrator of the proposed Afghanistan Humanitarian Trust Fund. We look for generous support from all countries, international, regional and bilateral organizations, private sector, philanthropists, to announce their pledges to this fund. I hope today's forum will result in outcomes that will enable us to leverage the intrinsic Afghan entrepreneurial spirit to create local employment opportunities to ensure long-term peace, prosperity, and growth in Afghanistan and beyond. I reiterate my thanks and appreciation to the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia and the Organization of Islamic Cooperation for this well-timed initiative. I also extend my special thanks to the government of Pakistan for its generosity and hospitality. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I thank Chairman Dr. Mohammed Salaman Al Jasser for his remarks and contributions to our discussions. I will now request Mr. Martin Griffiths, Under Secretary General for Humanitarian Affairs and Emergency Relief Coordinator, UN Office for the Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs, OCHA, who is representing UN Secretary General Mr. Guterres to come to the rostrum and deliver his remarks.
Thank you very much indeed. And uh, Honourable Prime Minister, Excellencies, friends and colleagues, it's my privilege here to represent the Secretary General of the United Nations, who wishes he could also have been here, but the words that I will speak are his. As the Honourable Minister of Pakistan has already said, <clears throat> I have spoken elsewhere of the fact that Afghanistan's economy is now in free fall, and that if we don't act decisively and with compassion, I fear that this fall will pull down the entire population with it. 23 million people are already facing hunger. Health facilities are overflowing with malnourished children. Some 70% of teachers are not getting paid, and millions of children, Afghanistan's future, are out of school. The value of the Afghani currency is plummeting. Trade is damaged by the lack of confidence in the financial sector, as we have heard. And the space for borrowing and investment has constricted dramatically. So the need for liquidity and stabilization of the banking system, again, as we have heard from a number of speakers, is now urgent, not only to save the lives of the Afghan people, but also to enable humanitarian organizations to respond and operate effectively. I welcome the decision by the World Bank's Afghanistan Reconstruction Trust Fund to transfer 280 million US dollars by the end of December to UNICEF and the World Food Program. This step should be followed by reprogramming of the whole fund to support the people of Afghanistan this winter. Families simply do not have the cash for everyday transactions. While prices for key commodities continue to rise, the cost of wheat and fuel are up by around 40%, and food now accounts, accounts for more than 80% of average household expenditure. Basic social services that all Afghans depend on are collapsing as international development support, upon which the country has depended for so long, has frozen up. By the middle of next year, as estimated by UNDP, universal poverty may reach 97% of the population of Afghanistan. That could be the next grim milestone. Within a year, 30% of Afghanistan's GDP could be lost altogether, could be, while male unemployment may double to 29%. The Organization of Islamic Cooperation is coming today together to express the willingness, as we have heard, to help avert this disaster and to contribute to the humanitarian endeavor. And I am here to say, Excellencies, that the United Nations stands firmly with you and your efforts and your plans, and both of us in solidarity with the people of Afghanistan. Next year, the United Nations will seek funding for the largest ever appeal for humanitarian assistance for a country an annual appeal of about $4.5 billion to help the most vulnerable in Afghanistan with life-saving assistance. But our plan is a stopgap measure for over 21 million people who need that assistance. Of course, it must be funded as a matter of priority. But the crisis is huge. The humanitarian response is effective and it continues to scale up. And thanks to generous donor support, the Afghanistan response plan for 2021 was fully funded, a unique achievement in these years. But going forward, we need more than this. Afghanistan will not get through the winter on emergency aid alone, again, as has been said by previous speakers. We also need flexible donor funding that can be used to ensure salaries for public sector workers 
and support to basic services such as health, education, electricity, livelihoods to allow the people of Afghanistan some chance to get through this winter and some encouragement to remain home with their families. Going forward, we also need constructive engagement with the de facto authorities in a process of meaningful dialogue to clarify what we expect of each other. The consequences of inaction on these three fronts are clear, and the three fronts are emergency assistance, flexible funding, and an engagement to be clear about what we expect from each other. And if we do not act fast on these three fronts, we know that we risk the collapse of this great country, and people will run out of hope, and the region, and indeed the world, will see destabilization increase with all the consequences that we have seen so clearly in history. Honorable Prime Minister, we're gathered here today at a moment of exceptional gravity for the people of Afghanistan. We have the advantage of being forewarned of the fate that awaits them if we do not act. We have the responsibility, because we are forewarned, knowing that if we do not act with urgency and with a collective will, there will be a terrible reckoning. We have that chance. We have that opportunity given to us